Uh, welcome to the 72nd session of the Economic and Social Commission for Asia and Pacific. As this is the first commission session to be held since the adoption of last September of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, the focus of our discussions will be the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals and their supportive tracks, including mobilization and coordination of finance, trade, investment, science, technology, and innovation, data and statistics, as well as climate and disaster resilience. If effectively implemented, the goals will lay the foundations for Asia-Pacific rebalancing of growth and development towards more sustainable development paths. The 72nd session, in the spirit of this new agenda, focuses on multi-sectoral and multi-dimensional topics to reinforce the significance of interlinkages and interdependence of goals. Capturing the dynamics and positioning of our region, our emphasis has been to align the work, knowledge and capacities of the Secretariat to reinforce the priorities of member states on the implementation of the goals. In this context, our session will deliberate on regional economic cooperation and integration to ensure the goals are better served through progress on transboundary challenges with an emphasis on connectivity, opportunities, the development of new markets, and tapping South-South as well as triangular cooperation, in particular by harnessing financing flows and exploiting partnerships in science, technology, and innovation. The challenges and opportunities of effectively harnessing SDI for inclusive and sustainable development are the subject of the theme study for this session, which reflects on the need for balanced integration of SDI across the three dimension of sustainable development, creating an enabling environment for innovation, financing, and nurturing further talent. It also discusses how the United Nations system, development partners, and South-South cooperation should support member states in these areas. In my submission, I will first touch on main elements of implementation of the goals and discuss their reinforcement through our new work on regional cooperation and integration. I will also share some perspectives on what we have done to harness partnerships and your guidance to us in terms of leveraging sustainability in our region. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, let me now touch upon how we plan to prioritize and strategize SDG implementation. As you know, the General Assembly has entrusted regional commissions with supporting member states in their efforts to implement the 2030 Agenda, especially in terms of facilitating effective follow-up and review. While we support national governments in their sustainable development priorities through regional policy consistency and coherence in terms of our core mandates. <clears throat> Achieving integration of sustainable development across dimensions, spheres, and partners will be key to the success of the goals. SCAP, as you know, is strategically positioned to facilitate this implementation given its interdisciplinary nature, its broad analytical expertise, its technical cooperation capacity, and its unique convening power in terms of outreach and engagement with governments, civil society, and development partners. Under your guidance, we have also been working to streamline both the conference structure and our work program 
to better align with these mandates. In view of the transformational change challenges <clears throat> and opportunities of the 2030 Agenda, ESCAP is adopting a prioritized <clears throat> and strategic approach to support implementation of the goals, focusing on value addition. Through our 2016-2017 work program, and in coordination with other regional commissions, the Secretariat will therefore be focusing on, one, strengthening our intergovernmental platforms through higher quality analytical work to promote policy integration, coherence, and consistency. Two, we will be working on regional coordination of national statistical development, indicators for the goals, and supporting follow-up and review processes under the regional coordination mechanism, which involves coordination with the United Nations system across the region. Three, we will be advising on options and modalities for financing of development, trade facilitation, and how to leverage STI along with supportive capacity building. Four, we would be working on translating regional models into global public goods. And five, positioning ESCAP as a knowledge sharing and learning organization to enable change. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, <clears throat> let me discuss a little regional co economic cooperation and integration. Advancing regional economic cooperation and integration has been one of the Commission's most consistent priorities and a long-standing one. Through Resolution 70-1, Member States gave the Secretariat renewed impetus to broaden and deepen regional cooperation and integration to reinforce the 2030 Agenda include taking advantage of ESCAP's intergovernmental and cross-sectoral expertise to promote dialogues, undertake new analytical work, and help build, build member states' consensus on the norms and agreements necessary to advance this agenda. Member states have specifically requested us to work with them to deliver on a vision of a more integrated Asia-Pacific region, identifying following four strategic pillars. One, moving towards the formation of an integrated market. Two, the development of seamless regional connectivity. Three, enhancing financial cooperation. And four, increasing economic cooperation to address shared vulnerabilities risks and challenges. Through our sub-programs, both in the past and in recent years, ESCAP has taken steps to advance these pillars of regional cooperation, especially in terms of addressing disaster risk, regional financial cooperation, enhancing trade and investment, as well as promoting connectivity across the transport ICT and energy sectors. Regional cooperation and integration has assumed renewed significance with the adoption of the 2030 Agenda, and by its nature, regional cooperation has the potential to resolve many of the cross-border challenges at the heart of the goals in areas such as climate action, regional connectivity, as well as intra-regional finance and trade. This year, during the ministerial segment on Tuesday, we will hear the perspectives of leaders, ministers, and senior officials from our membership in a high-level dialogue about regional cooperation and integration. To complement that discussion, and in response to Resolution 70-1, the Secretariat has prepared a note to the Commission on enhancing regional economic cooperation 
and integration in Asia and the Pacific. And I refer to document E slash SCAP slash 72 slash 5, which provides forward looking detailed recommendations on implementation of the Bangkok Declaration to catalyze further regional cooperation and integration and to steer the region towards the goals of poverty eradication and shared prosperity. The Secretariat is also finalizing a comprehensive paper on the status of regional economic cooperation and on its future directions. We are in the process of augmenting our technical work for each of the sub-regions to examine opportunities for harnessing overall integration through more dynamic sub-regional action with your support. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, <clears throat> let me now discuss what you have mandated us to do, the enhanced partnerships for better implementation. Experience in delivering the Millennium Development Goals has reinforced the significance of forging effective and sustainable development partnerships. This is why Sustainable Development Goal 17 makes the specific link between the means of implementation and strengthen partnerships, and why revitalizing SCAP's strategic development partnerships has been another key priority for the Secretariat over the past year. Among others, we have strengthened for our collaboration with the Asian Development Bank and United Nations Environment Program through new memorandum of understanding and signed new agreements in support of our work on tsunami and disaster preparedness with the Government of India and Japan. We also signed a new trust fund agreement with the United Kingdom's Department of International Development to strengthen national statistical systems to produce high quality economic statistics, which will also be the focus of our capacity building work through the Statistical Institute for Asia and the Pacific located in Japan. Kazakhstan has solicited our support to assist the Pacific Island economies to implement renewable energy policies and solutions. Just last month, we formalized our partnership with China on promoting regional connectivity through the Belt and Road Initiative. SCAP and the Institute for Global Environmental Strategies in Japan will also be advancing collaboration on environmental issues and sustainable development. We all will also be expanding our partnership with the private sector with a new focus on engagement through the sub-regional offices and our sustainable business network. We will be offering training opportunities in areas such as e-waste and responsible business conduct and several other components of SDGs. We will also be starting a new program with the Economic Research Institute for ASEAN to explore the implications of the circular economy. These are just some of the examples of our partnerships. Most of all, we are trying to coordinate more deeply with all other parts of the United Nations system within the framework of coherence and delivering as one at the regional level. It has been a priority for us. This is being nurtured through SCAP's leadership on the regional coordination mechanism, popularly called RCM where new partnerships have been identified to work together on thematic topics of direct relevance to sustainable development. The thematic working groups of the RCM will now focus on seven areas, statistics, resource efficient growth, 
sustainable societies, inclusive development, disaster risk reduction and resilience, gender equality and women's empowerment, as well as education for all. The flexibility to add new areas is also built into these changes and the leadership of some of these thematic working groups will be with other UN agencies. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, the variety and scope of resolutions and decisions before the commission that I know you've been working very hard illustrate the extent to which member states have already taken ownership of the 2030 agenda and the work that will be required to implement the goals. Among these are draft resolutions that will guide ESCAP's role in support of this implementation. In total, the Commission has 12 proposals before it, which range from science technology and innovation for inclusive and sustainable development to disaster-related re statistics, strengthening regional transport connectivity, and addressing climate change, to name a few. I would like to thank now member states for their proactive efforts to ensure that through these resolutions, the outcomes of the session reflect the priorities of the Commission and necessary support by the Secretariat for your efforts to implement the 2030 Agenda across Asia and the Pacific. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, in conclusion, our region has never been better equipped to tackle the existing and emerging development challenges than we are today. With the 2030 Agenda and the Sustainable Development Goals, we have the blueprints for the future we want. We also have the resources that we need to implement the goals. What is still missing are the action steps to unlock these resources and to meet the targets that have been set in every subregion, in every country. ESCAP, with your support and, and goodwill, has undergone the restructuring of its conference structure and stands ready to support you in all of these endeavors. I wish you very fruitful deliberations in the week ahead, and I personally thank you for all your support throughout the year.